the, the reason you don't see a lot of oaks anymore is because they've been uh, replaced with conifers or fast, faster growing trees, trees that can be harvested, trees that can be, you can make money with. And they can't, they, they grow too slow for them to make money, even though um, they shouldn't be thought as an economic thing. They should be thought as a, a living being in this planet and, and be taken care of likewise. And uh, when people choose faster growing trees than oak trees, it's it causes two things. They plant too many trees in one area because they, they see it, they're going to harvest it. And the other thing is they plant trees where there weren't trees before. And that caused, if you look at um, pictures of places like Yosemite and stuff like that, if you look at old pictures, you can see all the way down through the valley. You can see the rivers, you can see everything. And you see trees here and there. But now if you look at that picture, same picture, you just see trees. You don't see anything else. And that's because they're they're conifers, they're pine trees, and and it's because, like, it's it's because it's money making. It makes money, but it overcrowds. It makes the trees f compete for for s s space to grow, and so they grow up and tall. And so when they catch on fire, they just burn up, and the canopies are all touching, and everything. The fire becomes above you. Um, and, and when we did our fires, our fires were on the ground. We never let them get up into the trees. And what happened too is, if the trees started to get overcrowded, it burned out the little trees so that they wouldn't compete with the sunlight. And, and, and you gotta kinda let them grow where they wanna grow, not where you want them to grow. And, and uh, um, there's too many conifers. And that's why we're having these horrible forest fires. Um, oaks don't burn well. Their bark doesn't burn at all. And um, uh, it's just like when you start a fire with, with pine, it goes, foom, and it's gone. You start it with oak, and it's going to burn all night. And so um, um, oaks don't burn well. And we just having... In our creation story, we kicked all the pines out. Well, not all of them, but most of them out. And, and why are they back now? And they're just because um, someone wanted to make money. I think I think people are f afraid to plant oaks because of the boar beetle beetle. And and. I don't think it, you would have more beetles if you put more oaks. It'd be less, I think you, what you need to do is make all these oaks more, the oaks that we have more healthy. I don't think the beetles are gonna bother healthy um, 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 oaks as much as they're gonna attack the ones that are weakened some way, somehow. And they're probably weakened because they're overcrowded with because all the oaks I see now, are, there's pine trees all around them. And, and they can be weakened from too many trees around them or too much growth around them. They can be weakened by a, a, a lot of things. And I think if you just take care of who you have, um, uh, everything would be better. I think the regimen of burning would kind of solve that. I, th I think that would take care of a lot of the of the bark beetle thing. Um, you know, I think the b biggest misconception about planting oaks is they take too long to grow. And they do take a long time to grow, but they live a long time and they're healthier. This bark beetle thing is gonna be we got every botanist science in the world working on it, and it, they'll solve it. It's um, it's a problem. 
But I think it's going to just take down the the sick trees and leave the healthy trees and and um, like these pine trees, you know. We we're looking at the, the the beetles killed that pine tree, but they didn't bother the, the other tr other trees because they're healthy. Just took out the sick ones. So um, I think this beetle will be will be taken care of. I think. Um, I think I think uh, the scientists will get a handle on it, and and the scientists nowadays are, we have tech people, traditional ecological knowledge, native people that are science, and they're not going to use a poison. They're not going to use something that's going to be real damaging. I think they're real nowadays. Uh, the, the the Roundup people are not. It's not about Roundup anymore. It's about using common sense and uh, using something that'll work that's not dangerous to everything else. But I, th I, th I think that we'll get rid of the bark beetle. And but and I, I, I just think we need to. I just think it'd be really cool if people, like would com commemorate something by planting an oak and then generation after generation can uh, kind of honor that monument of whatever that oak was planted for. And it would just last generations and generations and generations instead of a, another kind of tree that'll just die in a few years. But oaks live long, they're hardy, they give, acorns are probably one of the most nutritious things you could eat. Um, oaks grow all over the world and ours, and ours are very u unique as far as our acorn. Um, we've tried acorn from other, from like Asia, and it's not the same as our acorn here. It's, um, it's, it's special. And if you could, if you live high, black oaks only grow above like four or 5,000 feet. Not all oaks are big and shady like this. Some are small and bushy. And those are the scrub oaks. Uh, they have a good looking acorn, but they're is evidently not good to eat. Um, but I found out the better the acorn, the worse the wood. The worse the acorn, the better the wood. So scrub oak has a really strong, strong wood. And it's the one that we use for digging sticks, um, make shinny sticks, play a game called peyak, or peyak sticks, I should say, um, or e peyak. Uh, and special tools out, out of the uh, scrub oak. Uh, of, of, uh, Rabbit sticks, the curved rabbit sticks, which actually start out as a, a piece of scrub oak that's straight, and you put it in a fire and you bend it into like a, a boomerang shape, and then carve it. Um, so, not all oaks are big and tree-like. There's some bush ones that are called scrub oak, but most of the oaks are big, uh, um, like this, these. These are Engelman oaks that are all gnarly. You have the nice, straight uh, limbed ones, uh, the live oaks, uh, which I like their acorn. Their acorn is, black oak acorn looks like chocolate pudding. Um, live oak acorn looks like uh, um, butterscotch pudding. It's got a kind of yellow color. And, and the processing of these to make, um, the, the product of, 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 of making this acorn mush uh, is called shawi. Um, in, in my language, in Luceno, it's called uh, we wish. And um, we used to think it was chocolate pudding, and we would taste it, and it doesn't taste like ch chocolate pudding. Uh, it doesn't taste like much. Um, and I, we always say, oh, we wish, we wish we didn't have to eat it because. It wasn't chocolate pudding. 
but in Kumeyaay it's called Shawi. It's a really long process to make. You have, I think I, I already said this, but um, you have to dry the acorns out. You have to crack open the shells. You, and, and when you crack open the shells, you have to hit them right perfectly that, so they split long ways so you don't crush the, 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 it's a nut and you don't crush the nut part. There's a skin on it, like a peanut skin that you have to get off. You have to winnow that off, um, um, and then you grind it, and you sift it, and you regrind it until the flour. Uh, the, the, it's, it's I call it flour, but it's not really flour. So the crushed nut is uh, really f fine. Um, after that, you rinse water through it until you're washing out this something called tannic acid. And this tannic acid is the same stuff that um, tans hides. It's a preservative. And that was keeps the acorn nut um, good for years and years. It's a preservative that naturally preserves that we wash out of it. And then after that's the, the tannic acid is washed out, we can cook it and it cooks in, and it turns into like a, a pudding, like it wiggles like a pudding. And, uh, uh, but it has no taste. Uh, I heard it compared to poi a lot, uh, the Hawaiian food poi. I describe it as soggy cardboard, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, uh, it's very nutritious. It was our supplement for our fruit. And it was very special that we, um, almost in ceremony, take the whole tribe and move them, uh, you know, up into the mountains and something, you know, that could be a long distance. That could be, you know, 20, 30 miles sometimes to move a whole tribe up to the mountains to gather acorns. Um, and, there, and each tribe would have, a, or family would actually have a place to go up in the mountains. So everybody had a mountain home, so too. But those those mountain homes were specifically to gather uh, acorns from the oaks. So they were very special to us, uh, very sacred, very, very you know, is the kind of the basis of our traditions. We're we're also, we're also called acorn people, which means we're oak people. If you're considering uh, planting a tree in your yard, consider an oak tree. Um, You'll have a long time watching it grow, and you have a long time after, from generations after that, uh, watching it uh, be big and strong. Um, and you might consider an Engelman oak, since they only grow in San Diego. And um, as you can see, they provide really nice shade. 